Welcome to Muller Time. What's up, man? How you doing? I'm doing very well. It's been a uh, long day as usual. Oh, it was a long weekend. It was a long week. Nothing was good. So let's get right into it. Uh, Brett Kavanaugh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, did you see the 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 second ceremony tonight? The the sham. Well, it's all a big sham, but um, the president is not. It's not his job to swear in. Uh, Supreme Court justices, and he was sworn in already over the weekend. So this evening, Monday, they had a um, another ceremony. Yeah, I just I I couldn't watch it. I couldn't bring myself to watch that. Trump declared him innocent and apologized on behalf of the entire nation. Yeah. Oh, I heard about that. Oh. Yeah. No, I didn't even watch the final confirmation on Saturday. I was like, no, nah. no, nah, not for me. Yeah. What a disgrace. Yeah, and then all those angry mobs of protesters. <laughs> yeah, it, when it's women protesting, they're angry mobs. But when it's white supremacists marching in Charlottesville, they're very fine people. It just is, it's hard to believe that that happened. I mean, I know there's sometimes things just don't go your way, but there 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 is supposed to be this kind of this limit, this threshold to a fucking rapist is not supposed to get on the Supreme Court. No, it shouldn't. Yeah, that's, yeah, I, I'm very scared for what's happening 29 days from today. But then again, a rapist wasn't supposed to become president. No. And he's just he's just the same as if, if not worse. Yeah, it's okay for certain rich white men to be rapists in this country. You know, yeah. Well, yeah. but like you said, we got 20, 29 days? I think 29 days until election day. I, I'm not really optimistic on what's going to happen on election day, Eric. That's not that's not good. I know. You, it's bad. I, I'm I'm totally the keg is half empty guy. <laughs> I think the House is, uh, in my opinion, definitely gonna take the House. The Senate, that's that's where I'm not sure. You know, um I, I wanna be optimistic. I was watching MSNBC earlier today, as I do every single day. Katie Turr is um, out on location. She did her show live from UCLA. They talked a lot about the Orange County Congressional District that Dana Rohrabacher has been uh, sitting on since the late 80s. And uh, she's saying that there's a chance that could flip, but I, I'm not counting on it. Yeah, well, he's he's uh, Russia's best friend. Dude, so. he's, he's the OG Russian turncoat in uh, modern-day American politics. Yeah. Yeah. So the... Uh, New York Times dropped the largest story while, oh, wow. while we were gone. Yeah. Unfortunately, Kavanaugh, the rapist, kind of took a little bit of, away from that. Mm -hmm. But if everyone already read it. And in fact, I did that little mini sewed on it that one day when you were at work. Yeah, but the story's already gone. I mean, it's the biggest tax cheat in the history of tax cheats, and it's it's barely a blip on the radar. And on top of it, the people that vote for Trump, think that's cool because it's smart he knows I, how to cheat the system so it's good i don't agree that it's gone by the way these these things do matter the the same people who don't care like his followers don't don't care but i don't even think about them anymore i think it does matter and it matters the investigators read that too well they know that already all right well what matters is uh how much of it Mueller has and how much of that oh. he's going to use against trump i mean why did all i don't know why this all came out now i know there's been uh, the investigative reporters on it but did uh, what happened that made it possible to publish the story? Well, they Mueller probably had all this stuff for like two years. Well, I hope so. They've been they've been working on this one for a long time. Well, yeah, because I it was genius. I never thought about that. Everyone talks about Donald Trump's tax returns, but no one ever mentioned Fred Trump's tax returns. No, mm -mm. which is all which is what that story is. Well, Fred Trump wasn't running for president, but yeah, that's that is some that's. Trump himself had to learn his dirty tricks from someone. What I called that story too was I called it I called him the Big Lebowski <laughs> because that's what he is. Yeah. Everyone knew he was a tax cheat, but no one realized that he's never actually done anything. He's never made any money. No. Mm -mm. He received over five hundred million dollars and he continues to receive money in, in other ways. And well, he sold off the bulk of his father's empire. But the, the point I'm trying to make is it's it wasn't even what people thought it was. Yeah. Trump never created or generated he, revenue. He's just been burning through his father's money. And now he's burning through Russia's money. Right. And around when they sold off his father's empire around whatever it was, 01, that was the exact time where they say the Russian money started coming. Exactly. Yeah. What, a, what a fascinating coincidence. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and uh, we're supposed to believe that he started his. He was just started off with a small million dollar loan from Daddy. He did get a small loan of a million dollars, but as it turns out, it was starting when he was two years old. No, that, that you can't even call that a loan. That, that that was like that was his allowance. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He, he also never gave. He also never paid back the money, so it's not a loan. Mm-mm. Okay, so um, how does this work if you are Eric or Ivanka or Don Jr.? Uh, like when old man, oh, when when their orange father is time to time for him to pass on. Well, they are they cheating him the same way that he treated old man Trump? It's possible. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that part of the story was kind of messed up. How he he basically tried to take his father's money when he was he was you know, not as sharp as he used to be. Yeah. You know, I think, um, somewhere down the line, there's going to be a massive, uh, well, I don't know if they're not all in jail, but something tells me that Ivanka and, uh, her brother, Don Jr. are going to have a big battle over daddy's estate at some point. I'm sh- I'm sure they, I'm sure it's like some, I'm, I'm sure they battle all the time. Mm-hmm. I, it's not, they're not a family in terms of what, what most people oh. think of as, as a family. Yeah. They're, they're all strange people. Yeah. How about that sister who's a federal judge? Oh yeah. Now how? Um, wh- where where does she sit? Where, where if I was going to be on trial, uh, what would I have to do to have her be my judge? Yeah, Trump's sister who's a federal judge who's now kind of retired, I guess. But basically, so she's part of the scam too. So I hope that's pursued. Is she in place somewhere to get Trump off of something? Off on something? Off no, of some charge? I, I think that would be too far for even, I mean, I hate to even jinx us, but I think that would be too far for even mm-hmm. even this. Plus, no, no, she has, the, most people think she has gotten him out of some jams. Okay. There was the, what were you going to say? Okay, well, um, she's a federal judge. How did she get her seat? Was she, who was she appointed by, or is that an elected seat? How, how does that judge seat work that she has? I, I don't, I haven't seen any. Um, was she uh, appointed by Obama? <laughs> oh, by she. Bush, has, how long has she been on her bench? I think this was this goes way back. She's been since like like Reagan or before. Oh, okay. Oh, right. w- way back. Yeah. But yeah, she was so tr- Trump was good friends with this uh, cocaine trafficker who ran. Yeah. He he owned the helicopter business that would shuttle Trump oh, around, okay. and she used to fly in it. The federal judge. Okay. So yeah, I'm sure she knows exactly what was going on there. So there were it was a front for a, a cocaine trafficking business. Is these helicopters Trump yeah. helicopters? Yeah, David K. Johnston is pretty sure that Trump was was in the cocaine business because why would I mean it's not normal to have a cocaine trafficker run your helicopter operation. No, um, I think that's a trick learned from the music business because there's been acts that um, trafficked in cocaine using their tour buses. Is that right? Oh yeah, there there's like music business books that um, talk about that. I'll I'll find one and reference that next week. What what band was that? Uh, I I am not going to. Uh, libel any band here without some accurate information oh god yeah yeah no I hear, i'll have I to look that up i hear that yeah it was probably the rolling stones no i don't know oh maybe <laughs> who knows so there was a great one in uh peter smith gop operative mm-hmm. did you see that one keep going peter smith was a um he's no longer with us um i can't say i'm really too sad about that mm-hmm. peter smith was a gop operative who the Wall Street Journal wrote an article on him. He was trying to buy Hillary Clinton's emails. Oh, this guy. Okay, I heard the story tonight. Subsequently uh, committed suicide in a motel room. Mm -hmm. And once again, when I read about this guy and what's come out now, I can't really say I I felt too sorry for him. Well, he was trying to raise money via GoFundMe, wasn't he? Well, the initial articles were... I'm not sure about a GoFundMe, but it was not what we know now. It was it just sounded like the classic shadiness. Mm-hmm. But now, uh, now we know that the special counsel has been heavily looking at this. Mm-hmm. Mr. Smith had multiple cell phones. He was using email accounts, and he had raised 150 about 150 thousand dollars. And he was in communication with someone to deliver that money to a Russian scholarship fund. Mm-hmm. That doesn't exist. Okay. Now, uh, let me let me slow you down and back up here for yeah. a moment. You describe him as a GOP operative. Mm. All right. Well, is, is he connected to Trump? Is he connected to the Republican National Committee? How exactly is he an operative? Is he just working rogue where he thinks he can raise the money, get the emails, and then go pitch it to Trump? I mean, what? Well, he, where, did, where was this guy? How was he connected? He's an establishment guy. He's worked yeah. in all aspects of government, okay. and he was real tight with uh, Mike Flynn. 
Okay, there we go. Now, um, he, you really thought, okay, now let's just say Russia had the uh, the missing emails. $150,000? Come on, that's not enough. I was thinking about that, but then apparently they, the total amount of money they spent on this Facebook thing uh-huh. that's wrecked this country was about, apparently about a hundred k. Wow, all right. But it's just, this guy was really, I mean, he was doing the whole thing, like, I mean, the cell phones, the he spent a lot of time covering his tracks. He was mm-hmm. very, very careful. Mm-hmm. Not careful enough. That sounds like consciousness of guilt right there. And he collected money from donors that are unknown and tried to deliver it to this scholarship fund. I don't know if he actually delivered the money. Okay, so that's where I cut you off. So you said there's a phony Russian scholarship fund. That's right. where the, his raised funds were going to go, and uh-huh. somehow he would magically get Hillary's and, missing emails. And he was contacted by federal investigators and the Wall Street Journal, mm-hmm. and then he killed himself. Wow. So Yeah, that's serious cons- consciousness of guilt. Yeah. So I'll be very interested to hear what happens with uh, Mr. Smith. Okay, um, I, I've always asked this question. And nobody's had a really good answer for me. What do they think is in Hillary's emails? What What could be in there that could be so damaging? Cooking recipe? I, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, no, that's really what they got out of John Podesta. It was it was his re- it was his mother's recipe for for yeah, something. But, but see, that was PizzaGate. See, they got that out of that. It's it's not <laughs> a. I mean, you already know the answer. It's not about what's in there. It's about the. Just the selling it, the appearance of something. Mm-hmm. I mean, all that, all that stuff. What did they pull out of it? They pulled out of it that Hillary Clinton didn't like Bernie Sanders. Mm-hmm. That's a surprise. And there was some interesting stuff in there about with the DNC. Okay, but no, these aren't the missing emails. These no. this mythical missing emails. It's not about what's what's missing. It's about the impropri- The when you if it's it's psychology. If I tell you something's missing. Or there's some you get interested in it. Okay, yes, but the implication is there's some some criminally damaging uh, information in these missing emails of Hillary's. That that's the reason why they're so wanted, or at least they were during the 2016 campaign. Uh, so that gets back to my question: What do they think is in there? The closest thing I got to an answer uh, revolved around I don't even know who told me this, but uh, said it would be proof of the Uranium One deal, which uh, there is no proof of that because I, I'm not even going to get into how that's been debunked. But what else is in there? I mean, is there an email saying Pizzagate is real? Yeah, I live by a general rule, which is, which is I don't, I don't care what right wingers say. <laughs> it's if the Democratic Party took my advice, I think they would win a lot more elections. Mm-hmm. Um, now, Kavanaugh showed us once again that whatever crazy nut job thing the right uh, tries to accuse the left of, well, the right's actually doing it. And I keep bringing up Pizzagate. Well, Kavanaugh was running the sex ring; he was running the rape ring. Right. Yeah, an underage rape ring. That yeah, that would be well. I guess if he was close to the same age, you can't call it pedophilia. But um, well, so once again, point the finger at the the Democrats for doing the really, really criminally insane thing. And now we got someone on the right that actually did it. And now he got a seat on the Supreme Court. Yeah, and once again, the news is it's just it's just amazing. Mm. Tri- <laughs> Just the spin was is just amazing. Oh, okay, hold on. Can we talk about Susan Collins on the Sunday morning shows yesterday? Sure. Um, she just pissed me off so much. She basically said, she won't come out and say it, but she basically said that Dr. Blasey Ford was lying. And she thinks it's the case of mistaken identity. Um, now, everyone keeps saying how there is no evidence, no corroborating evidence whatsoever. So we can't say that uh, Kavanaugh is guilty because there's no evidence. Um so the only thing they can say, though, is that Dr. Blasey Ford is uh, her her memory's faulty, and it has to. The yes, something happened to her, but she's mistaken by the identity. They have no evidence that she is uh, has a case of mistaken identity. They're just pulling that out of thin air because that's the only plausible thing they could think of without saying she's lying about being uh, attempted to being raped. Right, right. Like I said on the show the other day, when you look at judges and courtrooms and. Uh, other countries, third world countries. And that's the joke about what happened here was that this is a third world move. They installed a straight up criminal Mm -hmm. on the court installed by another criminal. Uh, The woman told the truth, but it didn't matter. And now we have a guy who basically said in his confirmation hearing, what goes around comes around. Oh, I know that was, that was totally scary. So what's he going to do? What's our punishment? He's coming for women. He's coming for minorities, uh, immigrants. Mm-hmm. That that will be 
uh, we know how guys like this think. Yeah. They're all the same. They're, you know, there, there's a phrase called, they apply this to mass shooters, actually. It's called injustice collectors. And that's, Ooh. yeah, that's, that's what these people are. They're people who, you know, I mean, you've known people like that maybe who didn't shoot someone, but they're always, they're keeping a, a thing in their head. You know, this guy fucked me, that guy fucked me. And that's, that's an injustice collector. Mm-hmm. And a lot of right wingers are like that. I mean, you've seen it. Yeah. They control all three branches of government. Yeah. But it's not, there's no inner satisfaction. Um, now, someone, was it Lindsey Graham or was it um, Turtleneck that said, <laughs> had a similar comment about um, this is the new rules? This is how's it, uh, what, who said something about what's going to happen the next time the Democrats get to uh, nominate a Supreme Court justice, which uh, who knows when that's going to be right now? Somebody made it, one of the senators made that comment. I don't know if it was, um, it wasn't Grassley. It wasn't, uh, was it Lindsey Graham? There yeah, is, you heard someone say something like that. There is a solution to this, which I'm glad you brought that up. It's called pack the court. And that's, I know that's not exactly what you were just asking me, but the the, the Democrats know what they're doing. They would add Supreme Court justices. Okay, but I, can they right now? Don't they still have to have some sort of majority in the right. Senate no, and they, the House to do that? They can't do it right now, but all you need is a simple majority. Mm. You don't even, it's, I had no idea how easy it was. Now, we're dealing with people who don't play by the rules. What I'm trying to say is, if the Democrats are smart, that's what they'll do. Yeah. But we all know they're not going to do that because they, they're not. <laughs> You've been reading uh, Avenatti's Twitter, haven't you? Oh, I love Avenatti. <laughs> I do too. Uh, because he's kind of, uh, he's lately been like uh, the opposite of the Michelle Obama. When they go low, we go high. He's basically saying we're done with that. And as you just mentioned, we're playing against uh, a team that doesn't do anything other than dirty tricks. I was Avenatti before anyone even knew who Avenatti was. <laughs> For over ten years, I've been like, when are they, like I'm I'm a fighter. Yeah, that's you hit back. Like I've said, I don't know if Avenatti should run for president, but people should listen to Avenatti when oh, he's talking. Every day, he sounds uh, more candidate. I don't want to say presidential. I want to say candidatorial. Is that a word? He sounds sure. more and more candidatorial on Twitter every day right now. And true to form. People are attacking him. Mm-hmm. Obviously, the Republicans are going to attack him. But this ridiculous idea that Michael Avenatti is the reason that Brett Kavanaugh got confirmed. Yeah, that's uh, that's some scapegoat in there. That's uh, that's come on. Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. Uh, Avenatti is the reason it, it got held up as long as it did. Um, if uh, even though um, the, the Senate and the FBI absolutely refused to uh, interview Swetnick, his client Swetnick or any of her witnesses, even though that didn't happen, the fact that he made that news so public at least got the uh, the week long uh, delay. Here, here's the thing: I like Avenatti, but let's say let's say I didn't like Avenatti. In life, there's always going to be an Avenatti. Oh, you yeah. can't blame your can't. It's like they did that during the 2016 election. There's all these different, you know, this and that. Why didn't Hillary go to Michigan? It's like there's always going to be something that you can't blame everything. Like. I'm sure like Hillary Clinton wishes that Bernie Sanders didn't run. There's always going to be some, a yeah, snafu. Well, that's basically hindsight 2020. Right. You have to push through these things. Mm-hmm. Brett Kavanaugh was going to get confirmed, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. There was not one thing that led to that. Yeah. And I, I like Avenatti. Yeah, he's a ball buster. He just formed a pack. It's called Fight Pack, I think, or something. Okay. So he's clearly thinking about running. Well, yeah, that's that. That's obvious. Good for him. <laughs> yeah. You know, sometimes the best thing about a guy like that, an outsider, is that he pumps up, maybe he doesn't, but he pumps up other candidates. Mm-hmm. And he gets, he makes them be more sharp. Um, is that what happened with the Republicans and Trump, though? Well, in that case, the, the lunatic won. Yeah. And I don't think Avenatti is, is, is anything like Trump, but I hear what you're saying. Well, look, he, I, I do like the idea of someone that doesn't come from the political, cook, the Democratic political cookie, cookie cutter background mm. and uh, running that typical playbook. If he's going to run as a Democrat, he's going to throw that playbook out the window. And you're right. It's going to make the other candidates on the left more sharp. They might have to do something different. And that's exactly what needs to happen because they keep losing. The the next generation, the up and coming ones, the Ocasio Cortez is the, the Andrew Gillums. Those people are the future mm. and they don't seem as afraid, but unfortunately the leadership, uh, they helped get us where we are here. Yeah. And that's just, and that's just the truth. Mm-hmm. So I guess we'll see what happens there. Mm-hmm. Did you see the article on Rick Gates? Um, yeah, he, um, okay, no, I didn't. 
I, I, I know that it was on the news tonight. What, so you what, lied. I tried to. I tried to. That was good. That was. <laughs> yeah, it's, fill me in. So R- Rick Gates. Yeah, that was funny. Rick Gates uh, tried to hire an Israeli intelligence firm, private intelligence firm, to basically do what these Russians did. Oh, I, okay. I know the story you're talking about. You saw, now. Yeah. So you did see it. Yes. Keep going. No, that was it. So. Oh. He they he tried to pay this private firm or was interested in to create fake social media identities to yeah. bombard important people in the Democratic Party. Et okay, cetera. so when I read that story earlier today, now um, I think I read the was it in the Post or New York Times, one or the other Times. Um, it compared it to uh, what these these Israelis were doing is no different than what the Russians were doing, but I made a point to say the two were not connected. But what caught my attention was the creation of. Um, fake accounts, right. fake social network accounts. All right, now you're on Facebook. All of a sudden, over the last week, everyone's been flipping out, and I haven't actually seen it happen, but there's some scare of cloned accounts going around right now. Mm-hmm. And there was a story in the news last week about another Facebook uh, uh, hacking that uh, r- private information was exposed. Nice. Are all these things connected? And w- every time you hear another one of these stories, while we have less than a month until Election Day, come on. Well, there's two... Th- there were, I took, there were two big takeaways from that story. One, yeah. which again, I don't understand why they can't just say this. It's fucking illegal. Mm-hmm. They, there's all this like dancing around it. Let, let, let's reiterate this again. The deputy chairman of the Republican Party and of the Trump campaign tried to hire a foreign country's uh, private company to send propaganda our way. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm not a lawyer, but that's not legal. No. That's just, it's not. Now, uh, is it? It's it's not. I don't know. Maybe it is. The second thing. If, if, even if it's not, it's totally fucking unpatriotic. But go ahead. But I'm going to tell you something that almost nobody knows. People listening to the show might know it, but it was not in the New York Times article. I only know it because I like to read. Okay. Do you know who Scott Stedman is? I believe that's his name. I, I, no. He's I'm a, not going to lie. No. He's like 22 years old, reputable journalist. Okay. Uh, well, anyway, Mr. Stedman pointed out that the Israeli intelligence firm is actually not really Israeli at all. Guess who's their parent company is? Oh, geez. Uh, right, somehow, ba- right back to Russia. RT. It's just some. It's just yeah. some Russian oligarch or whatever. All right, which is Putin then. If Basically, you're, if you're an oligarch, you're not an oligarch unless Putin lets you be an oligarch. So there you go. So Rick Gates actually was not really dealing with Israelis. Mm-hmm. There's some, it goes back to Russia. Yeah. How fascinating is that? Yeah, Russia. Yeah. Every, all roads lead to Russia. Mm-hmm. Dude, I, I, Daily Wire, Ben Shapiro got called out today for publishing more Russian propaganda. Yeah. It's a beautiful thing. Come on, Benji. Yeah, what happened with that? Yeah, um, about a week and a half, two weeks ago, there was a, uh, a viral video that went around of a woman on a subway that was pouring a mixture of water on bleach on the laps of men that were manspreading on the subway. This was a St. Petersburg, Russia subway, and it was a video. Now, um, uh, Daily Wire ran a story about it, mentioned the used the phrase unsuspecting subway riders, and now... Um, rawstory.com published uh aggregated a story from another website that calls out that all they do is call out russian propaganda and this was funded by the kremlin the men were not unsuspecting subway riders they were actors two weeks ago daily wire ran the story as uh, as news as something real when it was staged russian propaganda um i called out ben shapiro on twitter tonight about it and um as of right now the story still stands on ben shapiro's daily wire website wow yeah so um why is his news website so susceptible to russian propaganda (laughs) it's not the first time they've published russian propaganda it won't be the last time why does that happen well it seems like when these russians target all over the world they're involved in operations Mm. and it seems like in every country they target the right wingers now, the angle that Ben Shapiro's Daily Wire took with this was feminism is bad. Look at this evil feminist woman pouring a mixture of bleach and water on these unsuspecting men's laps. So uh, the, Russia and the Kremlin, with this piece of propaganda, is trying to sow discord here in the United States. And Ben Shapiro ate it up because he can go attack feminism. <laughs> Dude, while we were gone, or not gone, but just in the week, mm-hmm. Mueller News was, was like everywhere. I mean, there there was a lot going on. Mm-hmm. This Sherry Jacobus. Oh, what's this one? She's like, she's like a Republican PR person. 
She, I had read about this a while ago. She had this case. She was hacked during the, like everyone else in America, during the 2016 election. Mm -hmm. She had said some sort of, she was a source for a story and had said some inflammatory things about the Trump campaign. Subsequently, she was hacked right after, along with uh, Rick Wilson and some other people. Anyway, so that was referred to like the FBI cybercrime unit. And this is a long story that I can't get into. Is they were con- they were her and Rick Wilson and these other people were contacted by some bizarre uh, somebody pretending to be like an English lawyer or something. Okay. Anyway, long story short, I guess she followed up on her case recently, and the F- the cybercrime unit said your your case has been sent to the special counsel. Wow. Okay. So wait, where did you read this story? I didn't see this one. I forget. I was like um, in the Washington Post or something okay. like that. So this this hacking of prominent Republicans, good people like Rick Wilson, was referred over to Mueller too. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, there really wasn't any much detail. But again, fat you know, crazy story. All right. So when uh, when do you think Mueller's going to drop his special counsel report? Well, I I don't personally agree with everyone that he goes by this rule about the elections. Mm-hmm. But it does seem now that we're thirty days out. It has been quiet in yeah. terms of him. So. All right. Well, next day. what I'm more concerned about, though, um, will it be handled the same way the FBI investigation, the special, the, the seventh FBI investigation into Bart Kavanaugh happened? Okay. So the way that, I mean, I don't think there's quite the control of the scope uh, on, Ka- on 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 Mueller. Mm. But now, when Mueller does say turn in this report, are we going to get to see it, or is it going to be uh, only certain senators one at a time for a very short period yeah. of time? By the way, I love that his name is Bart Kavanaugh, and he lied about that. Bart O. Kavanaugh. <laughs> but everyone knows that, right? That it was revealed that his name, his friends call him Bart. And he looked he looked everyone in the eye in that thing and said, I don't know who that is. Um, I don't think he did that. I remember going back and watching that, and he, he did an awesome job of weaseling out of actually no, I, answering the question. I, the closest thing he said was, you have to ask Mark Judge, but that was that was, but that's a lie. I, I remember well, it. Correct. He yeah. he absolutely knows that he was referred to as Bart. He chose not to answer that question. He didn't actually tell a lie. He didn't go there and say, "No, I'm not known as Bart." He didn't do that. He weaseled his way out of it, and he was allowed to do that because white privilege, because rich man privilege. I don't know why. But that's literally like if I wrote a book and had a character named Chris, and you were under oath, and they said, "Are you the Chris in the book?" <laughs> and you said, "Like your name." That's what that's what got lost till later, was that because everyone says his name is Brett, but it turns out that no one calls him Brett. They called him Bart. Yeah, there, we saw stuff in the yearbook where he was referred to as Bart, and someone else dug up some note written by Bart back in the day where he signed the note himself as Bart. Right. Oh, I think that was the letter about oh maybe we should warn the Beach Week neighbors that we're going to be loud and puke a lot and we're going to drink a lot of beer. Bart. Right. Yeah. The guy <laughs> had er- Bart. <laughs> the guy basically had everything but a custom license plate that said Bart. <laughs> Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, but get, getting back to this, um, the way that the FBI investigation was just completely squashed and just, like was not allowed to actually happen. Is that going to happen to Mueller, especially if things go poorly on the first Tuesday this November? No, oh. Mueller is going to drop a, a bomb on these people. I hope so. But I have I'm, I don't know. I, I think the bomb diffusing techniques are going to happen. I'm, I'm telling you, even the all the stuff I'm reading is, dude, keg half empty, buddy. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's that's you. Yeah, it is me. I'm not. I'm not gonna dispute that right now. I think Mueller's more than done his share already. I mean, uh, what, what do you think is gonna happen? I I think the worst is gonna happen. I think um, every Democrat's gonna lose the first Tuesday in November. Um, and Trump is going to just use his powers of Trumpiness to shut down, to completely shut down the Mueller investigation, and it's going to po- poof it off into the cornfield. It's too late. If he he should have done that before, but he can't do it anymore. I hope you're right. He he. They said he was going to fire Rosenstein. He didn't do that either. Oh, Rosenstein this sure is, got the scary plane ride today. <laughs> if he was going to do this stuff, he he had to do it before. It's too late. Everything's written up and ready to go. He could fire him. He could fire him tomorrow. And it'll hit, it'll hit the newspapers, every newspaper in the world, along with all the evidence and how they got it. Yeah. Nah. Again, I'm, I'm not optimistic about anything right now. Really? Yeah. Well, yeah, really. He's indicted 35 people. I mean, don't you 
that doesn't mean anything to you? Uh, until he indicts Trump? No. Well, you got to... Okay, look, again, I'm being completely pessimistic here. You, you understand that. Uh, I, I, I'm I just refusing to get my hopes up on anything. Well, you have to, man. I, I, I mean, they've, they've indicted at Roger Stone's next, and then after that, Don Jr. I hope so. And, you know, we'll see what happens with Trump. Come on, they got, they got to find a reason to indict Ivanka. Yeah, <laughs> that would be nice. Oh. Meanwhile, so speaking of Roger Stone, uh, Randy Credico, the uh, New York stand-up comic slash whatever he is. Oh, yeah. That guy's really a comic? I don't know. Randy Credico is a left-wing activist who Roger Stone says was his intermediary between for Julian Assange. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, we just found out that the special counsel <laughs> has uncovered some radio interviews between the two of them where basically Roger Stone tells uh, Randy Credico that he's been talking to Assange through an intermediary. In other words, it's not Randy Credico. Okay, so who who is who is it then? Nobody knows. All but right, the, so but so this radio interview uh, basically clears Credico's name. That's what it sounds like. Was Credico trying to tell people he was the intermediary no, to look cool? No, in fact, he he when he was called into, I heard him say on TV that wasn't me, mm-hmm. and he he felt that Roger Stone threw him under the bus, and now he's got corroboration. He does that mysterious magical corroboration that shows up when a right winger needs it. Yeah, yeah. So for some reason, Roger Stone did it doesn't want anyone to know how he got to Assange. Mm-hmm. I suspect it's some Russian name. Of course. Yeah. I don't, you know, you don't have to be a genius to figure this stuff out. Is Roger Stone on the uh, political lineup this year? I don't think I saw his name. No, but I'll, actually I'll tell you who is since you brought it up. Okay. Uh, Carter Page. Oh, that's right. That's uh, He just got booked. He's that's- fun. I hope he's wearing his bucket hat. <laughs> yeah, I would I, I I would I would talk to him. I think that would be an interesting interview. Oh, he he probably would talk to us. You think he would? Oh, you, I, you see how he ran his mouth on Chris Hayes? He'll talk to anybody. I it's maybe. Mm-hmm. I sort of think he's the opposite. I think he's an arrogant jackass and I think he he only I think he's like a star fucker. So I think he would only talk to somebody super famous. All right. Well, we'll have the big fancy looking camera. You know, you might not necessarily have to be famous if you have a pro-looking camera. We're gonna be right, we're gonna come at him with a camera, not an iPhone. Yeah, I'll just I'll just tell him I'm uh, somebody from NBC. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> He's the guy's so dumb he probably won't know the difference. Well, let's make fake flags for our microphone. that say like you know, let's make a Fox News one and let's make a yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, no, that's bad. Let's not misrepresent ourselves at Politicon. I I don't think anyone really cares. No. Okay. I'm not, no, I'm not going to pull up like some, I'm not doing like some Sasha Baron Cohen. Mm. I want to spend about, when we're there, I want to spend about half the time in the panels and then the other half working. Yeah. I'm going to split it evenly yeah. this time. Well, we got to sit down with the schedule and figure out exactly which panels to hit and which ones we'll miss. And yeah. Oh, I, I wrote that up. Already. Okay, good. Well, I, did, the, well I, I have my ideas what we want to do. Let's compare notes then. And yeah. Actually, I, sorry, I already wrote up our schedule. So. Oh, you got, okay. So I got no say in the schedule. All right, that's cool. Uh, should have been there. <laughs> hey, well, do you have the the real uh, the real Daily Wire uh, uh, panel on there for us? Oh yeah, that's you got that one. Okay, that's, good. That's all you. I'm gonna during that. I'll uh, I'll step. No, it, you can't even pick the events. There's so many good events at this mm-hmm. thing. Yeah, and they keep they keep adding them too. Mm-hmm. I mean, the whole Washington Post staff is going to be there. They have a whole stage. Well, okay, I remember last year too. They um when we got there, like MSNBC had their big. Uh, exhibit display right in the middle of the convention floor that wasn't mentioned anywhere on the website ahead of time but yeah. you're saying so the washington post is going to be like who from the post is coming uh ruth marcus like a like a lot of great journalists they're, they're going to be doing a lot of stuff there yeah. speaking of julian assange i uh, so in russia so it turns out that russia had worked on all these different plans to try to get julian assange out of that embassy mm-hmm you know the guy who has nothing to do with Russia. For some reason, they're really yeah. They want yeah. They want to. They had a plan to yeah. You saw that to mm-hmm. to you know it was like to it was like some kind of like reverse Shawshank Redemption like <laughs> like that's what it sounded like. How would how would it be reverse? He would he would go into the the sewage pipe and back into the jail. Something like that. I don't know. <laughs> Point of view, Can't right. they just like have a, a a Russian vehicle with diplomatic immunity pull up and just jump off the balcony and into the car and he's safe? 
I mean, I I would think so. I mean, yeah, we haven't seen him do one of his balcony interviews in a while. But let's let's just consider this for a sec. If he has nothing to do with Russia, why were they spending? It sounded like a serious amount of manpower mm -hmm. trying to figure out how to get him out of that embassy. No, they're yeah, they, uh, Assange is. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, that WikiLeaks turned full on, turned into full on Russian propaganda. I mean, it's kind yeah. of funny. Yeah, yeah, that was, that was good. Well, Ecuador wants him out of there anyway. <laughs> they've they've pretty much had it with him. Yeah, why did they? Why did Ecuador give him asylum in their British uh, uh, embassy in the first place? I'm not sure about that. I don't know how he chose them. Mm -hmm. I think maybe I'm just kind of maybe riffing a little bit here, but I thought I read that they're very sympathetic to what they would call human rights cases mm -hmm. and, or they're known for that kind of thing. Uh, but again, I'm, I'm not sure somehow he chose them. All right. Well, they probably were told a story that they've since realized is not the truth. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then Mueller news, Richard Pinedo, the guy, no, the, the identity thief from Santa Barbara that no one knows who that is. Okay, no. He, he's one of the indicted people. Mm -hmm. He's the one when they have on TV the pictures of people indicted, they never have a photo. Okay, no, I don't. I totally don't know who this guy is you're talking about. Yeah, exactly. I know, because it was like the way time moves now. This was in the original, he was indicted in the original, almost almost the original list. Okay. He, he, he created fake, whatever, credit cards and accounts for these Russians mm -hmm. so they could buy ads on Facebook. Oh, wow. I mean, Imagine that. So what they were, so they were using he they were able to use U.S. funds because he, I, I thought there was a story how um during the 2016 election like Facebook totally took Russian money for Russian ads during the election that was major news. Yes, but I guess they had to somehow when they when they you know I guess he helped them open probably credit cards or checking accounts or whatever because mm -hmm. you know it's, it is hard to open some of those things. Well, of course, yes. And now, what, if you're going to do that much, then Facebook isn't going to necessarily know you're an actual Russian doing this. If right. you've got this guy in Santa Barbara that knows how to get you, you know, this, fake this, identities. Um, but there was the story how Facebook took just full on Russian rubles in payment from Russia for ads on Facebook. Yeah. 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 yeah they I guess they probably try to use this guy as a maybe a layer in between them. Mm -hmm. But really, you're right. I mean, it really didn't matter. They probably just could have. Straight up, honestly, just paid Facebook, who obviously doesn't care. I wish more people knew how to block ads on Facebook the way that I do. Our, our, things would go much smoother in this country. So Richard Pinedo, who was probably some surfer dude who got caught up way. So anyway, he's so this guy's cleared for sentencing, and uh, they said he was actually very, very helpful. Mm -hmm. So he's going to get a low sense. But anyway, the point, the reason I brought this up was one that he's cleared for sentencing, which is important, mm -hmm. but also. His lawyer said that he, when they were playing for a lesser sense, that he lives in fear of his life every single day. Well, I bet he does. And now, it, it, this wasn't some connected guy. This just sounds, sounds like some criminal that they found. It wasn't like he's been in the family crime business for, for his entire life. So, yeah, I'd be scared for my life now, too. Yeah. He thought he was making a quick buck going into business with um, some shady Russians. Yeah, tough, tough shit there, dude. Yeah, I just keep, I mean, I don't know what this guy looks like or who he is, but I just keep picturing some surfer because it's yeah. Santa Barbara <laughs> and not even realizing what would happen to him. Yeah, he used to make fake IDs like, for the UCSB students. Right, and now you are literally, your name is going to be in a history book somewhere in it with a, you know, at the bottom, Richard Pinedo, you know, 30, arrested for identity fraud. Yeah, you're going to have a bit part in the movie in 2030 when it comes out finally. They literally never have a picture of this guy. I'm always curious. I'm like, what is like? Yeah, isn't there I, a, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna read up more on Richard Pinedo when we're done. Isn't there like a, a yearbook photo or something, <laughs> or something? Oh, um, I have a sibling that did time in Santa Barbara that might have a yearbook with his picture. How old was the guy? Seriously? Yeah. No kidding. <laughs> no kidding. I know. I mean, did he go to school in Santa Barbara, or is he just making his fake IDs in Santa Barbara? Crime. Wait, so you're from a crime family? Yes, I'm from a Santa Barbara crime family. Wow. So, no, seriously, though, you, your sibling did time? I didn't know that. No, no, no. Oh, wow, okay. That that was a turn of a phrase that um, I used. Uh, oh, you mean they just live there? Yes. Oh, yeah. okay. Did time in Santa Barbara. Oh, okay. <laughs> did not mean was in jail, sorry. No, I, that was... I did time in Orange County. I mean, that's I grew up in Orange County, so I always say I did time oh, in Orange yeah, County. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. So, sorry. Yeah, that's... I, I forget if I don't... If Yeah, I can't always use that phrase and make it work. No, it was about to, it was a podcast was about to get much better there. 
once I found that out. <laughs> My sibling in a Santa Barbara jail. <laughs> Michael Jackson, didn't he um, get thrown in a Santa Barbara jail that was smeared and with shit all over the walls? Okay, now I just don't feel well. <laughs> Well, I have no idea what you just said. When Michael Jackson got busted before all like years before he died, uh-huh. when he was arrested in Santa Barbara, which you you know he finally was cleared of all those charges. One of the stories that came out was the holding cell he was put in was feces you know, let's just were not, smeared let's just on not, the wall because I, I have to eat after this. Okay. So let's. I that was that sounds like a fake story. I'm sure to make people sympathetic to Michael Jackson. It's from 20 years ago, so who cares at this point? Who also was guilty of everything that they said? Yes. But he was rich enough to get off. You're right, aren't you? Yeah. He was wealthy enough that he got cleared of all of his charges. There seems to be a common thread here. Mm-hmm. The rich and powerful can really pull some things off. Yeah, and he had white skin. Yeah, so something did happen that was, again, a, a one-day... wasn't Actually, it wasn't really a news story at all, but it was, it was a, a highly concerning thing. George Soros conspiracy theory. <laughs> Okay, it's just getting funnier every time now. He's such a boogeyman, it's ridiculous. But but here's, go ahead. Here's the thing. Yeah, I know. This time it was echoed by the president. Yeah. Quotation mark. That's bad. It's, yeah. And it was also the same day echoed by, echoed by Chuck Grassley and Mario Bartiromo mm-hmm. on Fox Business. Yes. And if anyone doesn't know, the George Soros conspiracy theory is a anti-Semitic conspiracy theory blaming Jewish people for the world's problems. Mm-hmm. And the, yeah. yeah. Well, um, I w- became aware after these recent, uh, the, the, the most high profile mention of the George Soros boogeyman coming yeah. from Trump. Um, Julia Davis, who uh, is on Twitter. I've mentioned her before. She covers Russian prop, Russian state propaganda and tweets highlights in English. Well, she mentioned that the, um, the George Soros boogeyman thing uh, that originated in Russia, Putin likes to blame uh, George Soros frequently. Mm. That's interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah. So that's where that started. It, that That's Russian propaganda. It's anti-Semitic Russian propaganda. And by the way, like, because I spend plenty of time uh, on right-wing nutjob Twitter and right-wing nutjob website commenting sections, I've been accused of getting George Soros paychecks for years now. Yeah, uh, I actually want to know how can I actually get that? How can we what, what we do? We'd be accused of guy being paid by George Soros. I want to get a George Soros paycheck. This stuff, yeah, I am Jewish and my family is from Hungary, so I this stuff is highly concerning. I mean, I, this is why I don't want to hear anything from like Trump supporters or like mm-hmm. what I'm trying to say is the, the these people saying these things. You better just be careful mm-hmm. where you go with that kind of thing. Now, does Maria Bartiromo realize how anti-Semitic it is when you bring up the, oh, it's funded by George Soros? They know. Think she does? I do. Okay. Yeah. I mean, because it's just tossed around as such a, like an aside. And that, that's just the, one of the easy, easy go-to insults when you're, when you're trying to own the libs. If you're a right-wing nut job, oh, you're just a Soros troll. That's just something that they say. Um, now, let's set aside the anti-Semitic part mm-hmm. of it. The idea is, oh, you're only here because someone's paying you to to take up this side. Yeah. Um, well, that's how everything on the right works. Yeah. That's all funded by someone. Like, I like to make fun of Ben Shapiro every week. Well, he's funded by oil billionaires. Well, you know all these people. Mm. Just it's all projection. So what's the, what's the big deal if you are politically funded then by someone? You're getting secret money here. But then what it comes down to is, yeah, it's an anti-Semitic attack that originated as Russian propaganda from Putin. Yeah. And they better, like I said, they better be careful because we all know the history of where that comes from. And uh, mm-hmm. history is not going to repeat itself. Yeah. No. Nah. And I'm not going out like that. Mm. So, yeah. Seriously. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we can hook up with some of these people that get you the George Soros paychecks when we're at the WeatherCon. <laughs> Yeah, how do I get that check? <laughs> that's not even funny. No, that's going to be awesome. Mm-hmm. I can't wait. Yeah, Politicon's getting uh, only two weeks. Less than two weeks away. Is it? Well, yeah. It's oh, wow. 20th and 21st. Do the math. I can't. We're, we're two weeks from now, we will be done with the Politicon. Two weeks from now, you'll be uploading the post-Politicon episode. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, we're going to be uploading stuff like from Politicon all day long, both days. 
Oh man, I can't wait. Yeah, I'm very excited for that. I can't wait to meet our um the, our tenants that have been living rent free in our head. <laughs> <laughs> I've been wanting to meet them for a long time. Yeah, uh, Sears Al uh, from Lone Conservative. How you doing, buddy? Yeah, yeah. We're gonna meet some uh, some interesting people there. I'm sure mm-hmm. this th- that's gonna be wild, just because they chose to put it right before the midterms. Yep. Which was, I obviously... Yeah, let's see what kind of campaigning is going to be going on there. I wonder what candidates are going to show up. If I was a candidate, I'd show up at Politicon. There's going to be cameras everywhere. Yeah, I was looking into... Remember we interviewed that candidate, uh, Matt Woody? Do you remember that? Oh, yeah. That guy was... He was a really nice guy. Was he the weird like dude with all the rings and tattoos? No, no, no. That that guy was... Oh, that guy. Was... This guy was a real nice dude, just, just well-dressed. Um, oh, I think I... Okay, I think I do, but go ahead. He was running in Orange County. Anyway, I looked, he... Um, he only got 4% of the vote. No. But still, you know, I give him credit. He was just this regular dude yeah. who ran. Mm-hmm. I happened to, I thought of him the other day, so I looked him up, and it it had the results of the election, and then way at the bottom it said, Matt Woody, 4%. I'm like, hey, uh, yeah, hey, let's look. Oh, wait, he wasn't the guy with the bar in Culver City. No. No. How not did that. that guy do in his election? I know I voted for him. The That's a good question. The guy, I, don't, I don't think – I think I looked it up then. I don't think he won, but no. Yeah. He, he was running for one of these – Positions that no one knows what it is. It's like, like some, comptroller or some yeah, or it, water board. Something that's very no, water it's not boarding. Water, Wait, it's no, not called water boarding. <laughs> okay. um, yeah, uh, some like Culver City comptroller thing. Yeah, it was a job that pays like one hundred ninety thousand dollars a year or something oh, crazy. Wow. But you, like no one knows what it is. <laughs> yeah, um, but good for him for running. He was an entertaining guy. Yeah, yes, he was. Um, uh, oh. Are you uh, pretty excited about the United States Mexico Canada free trade agreement? Yeah, the 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 same free trade agreement we've always had, just now rebranded. Is it the same thing? There's really no difference, right? Yeah, right wingers are really going wild that day, and I I said to a couple of them, I said, you know, this is the same thing, right? Mm-hmm. And man, those people get very upset. No, no, it's not the same thing when Trump rebrands it. And I was tr- I was trying to explain this one guy. I was like, dude, it's NAFTA. They just changed. They upped a couple of the percentages. It's the same thing, yeah, it, except with a worse deal. name. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, I think this guy was going to start crying or something. No, I mean, that really just comes down to that's exactly what Trump does. He just smacks his name on it. Well, he can't call it the Trump trade agreement. But the fact that all he did was change the name, it, 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 it makes that a win for Trump. So tired of winning. <laughs> Yeah, you, you you cannot tell a um, Trump psychophantic that it it's something different, or you, they, you can't tell them that it's the same thing. Yeah, yeah, they don't want to hear it. They don't like the the facts. Don't care about their feelings. One more thing, uh, I am. We are trying to expand this thing, which is growing at a rapid rate. This podcast has now charted in seven countries um, wow. in the in the two hundreds, which is. Pretty great for a podcast run by two people, basically mm-hmm. out of a, <laughs> out of an undisclosed location. It's uh, yeah, United States, Australia, Canada, Israel, South Africa, That's South Africa, and the Philippines. Know. Okay. Anyway, so what I'm, I'm trying to expand this thing. So if anyone has any connections to like radio or wherever you live, or just somewhere that you think we could help get this out there, if you could contact us. At the Muller Time Podcast Gmail or Muller Time Pod on Twitter or the Facebook page. Yeah. If we got on the real radio, I got we got to watch our language. Yeah, I was looking into that, but uh, that's one of those things I'll worry about that when we get there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like Howard Stern did. Mm-hmm. But I don't. Again, just my goal is for as many people to hear this as possible. So if you think you could uh, help and you like it, please uh, let us know. Do you have anything that you'd like to plug? No, I think we're done. I'm done at least. Yeah. So my name is Eric LeVay, and you can find me at E-R-I-C-L-E-V-A-I on Twitter. I'm Chris, at Low Progressive on Twitter. And uh, sure you don't have anything to plug? No, I got no plugs. (laughs) All right. Otherwise, we'll uh, catch you all next week.